G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin and I'm an American learning to live down under here in beautiful Sydney, Australia. Today's video is probably going to upset quite a few of my viewers. So after living in Australia for a few months, I can say that there are some things about Australia that I don't really like and some things that I really hate about Australia. Today I am sharing a list of things that not only I hate about Australia, but I know several other Aussies who hate these things as well. Some of these are going to be very clear like Americanized annoyances and inconveniences and not real hates, but we'll get into that. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So the first thing I had to put on this list are the flies over here in Australia. And I feel like if you live in Australia, it's not that big of a deal. You don't understand why so many Americans hate the flies over here. So the first thing that I dislike about Australia, and this one, even some of my Australian friends agree with it, is that the flies are so damn aggressive. That is the damn flies here. The flies, the bugs, whatever you want to call them, like they are so pesky and annoying here. Like the bugs in general, just kind of like, you know, get in your face, they're annoying. But the flies are aggressive. Like the main problem that we get is flies, but there are a crazy amount of flies. It's ridiculous. Flies in Australia are like nowhere else. The flies over here are aggressive, they land on you, they land on your face, they get in your mouth. You shoo them away, you swat them away, and they just don't leave you alone. And flies here are everywhere. I don't see them as much in Sydney and over here in Western Sydney, but even going just a little bit outside of a suburban area, you see flies all over. I remember walking around Perth CBD and the flies would not leave me alone. I can only imagine how bad the flies are if you're living in the outback, what it's like living somewhere near Alice Springs or near Darwin, just how bad the flies can be. Now, obviously flies are a very important part of Australia's ecosystem. It's a small little thing to be annoyed about, I know, but it is one of the things that really annoys me about Australia that I haven't had that problem anywhere else. And the next one, and this one might make some people roll their eyes, but I think when you hear the full thing you'll understand the location of Australia is something that I really can't stand because it is so far from everything else. Australia is a continent. I mean, there's Australia and Oceania or however you pronounce that. The way I grew up, we were taught that Australia was a continent with a couple of the little islands surrounding it that are part of the continent. But Australia is a massive island. The closest area you can get to is Southeast Asia, and that's still hours on a plane. To get from Sydney all the way to LA, it's a 15-hour flight. And if you're from Europe, it's going to take pretty much an entire day to travel to Australia or back. I think most Aussies know that if you're going anywhere that really isn't Southeast Asia, you're going to need an entire day to fly. It takes so long to get anywhere else in the world. Australia is so isolated from most other parts of the world. It is an island. It is secluded and by itself. It's not connected. And it makes air travel, unfortunately, a necessity if you want to leave Australia. And obviously with fuel prices, flight prices have gone up and up and up. So leaving Australia has become more and more and more expensive. Now this one kind of ties into my last point and that is the cost for shipping anything over here. Even before the supply chain issues and before the whole pandemic thing, it took forever to get anything over here to Australia. And the cost of shipping was ridiculously expensive. Even just to get a small little parcel over to my partner before cost me about $80 and it didn't weigh that much. I think it weighed four pounds, which is about two kilos. And of course, with the global issues that are happening right now, it has only gotten worse and much more expensive, and it takes much longer to get the package from point A to point B. It's tough to get some of your favorite items shipped over here to Australia. On top of that, getting anything through Australia is time consuming because the customs process can be very difficult. It can be very long. There's no say in how long a package is going to be at customs. So if you have something shipped over from the States and they want to hold it at customs, it could take a week, it could take a month, you don't know. Even if there's nothing in your package to really hold it up, sometimes customs just get so backed up, especially over the last couple of years with everybody ordering everything online and not really going to the shops as much and not being able to travel around. 
The cost of shipping anything to Australia is so incredibly expensive. My mom sent me some mail by FedEx and it cost $170 US. She probably could have done that a little bit cheaper, but it is still an astronomical cost to get anything to Australia. And it works reverse too. It costs a lot to send anything out of Australia. Since I moved here, I've had family and friends asking, can I ship Easter candy over for the kids? Can I send them packets of Tin Tams? Can I send them some lollies? Can I send them some food? It's so expensive to send anything outside of Australia. So if I put a care package together that cost me maybe $30 out of pocket, I could be paying four, five, six times that amount just to ship it over. So yeah, the cost of shipping anything to or from Australia is honestly one of the things I hate about living in Australia. And the last one that I swear it ties into distance and shipping is the cost of alcohol over here. Part of that is because a lot of alcohol does have to be imported. Yes, Australia does have a lot of distilleries and wineries and breweries, and a lot of them have amazing products. I am not knocking Aussie-made alcohol whatsoever, but if you want a bottle of Jack Daniels or Tito's, you are going to pay a pretty penny, even though Australia doesn't have pennies which I actually like about it. I'll throw something in there that I like in this video. I like that Australia doesn't have pennies. But you're going to pay so much to get alcohol imported into Australia. You'll have the customs tax put on there. You'll have the goods and services tax put on there, along with a couple of others. So even going to a pub and ordering a Jack and Coke could cost you a good $10 just for that one little shot of Jack. Cocktails are expensive over here. Glasses of wine are expensive. Imported beer is really expensive over here too. So the cost of alcohol is just one of the things, while I don't hate it about Australia, it is kind of annoying about Australia. Now this one, hear me out, because you might hear the word and immediately want to click off the video or just roll your eyes, but one of the things that I hate about Australia are bogans. And I'm not talking about the mullet-wearing, Southern Cross tattoo-having, Australia flag tank top, Australia day thong-wearing people. I'm talking about the mindset behind, like, the typical, stereotypical bogans. So a lot of those, I guess we'll call them die-hard bogans in this case. So a lot of those types of bogans absolutely love Australia to their core, it's in their heart, it's in their soul, and overall there's nothing wrong with loving your country or being proud of where you're from, but there's a problem when nobody is allowed to criticize Australia. Nobody is allowed to point out something wrong about the country at all to them. I think that nationalist mentality is something that is dangerous. And I think there's something wrong with the idea in general that you're not able to criticize a country or a government or critique it in any way. No country is perfect. No government is perfect. So having somebody shut you down as being unpatriotic or whatever words that they want to use. I know patriotic is a word that you hear all the time in America. But the idea that somebody is anti-Australia because they don't like a particular thing about Australia or a particular thing about the Australian government. Honestly, it comes across as xenophobic and that is one of the things that I hate because I know so many people who have mullets, who have Southern Cross tattoos, who wear Australia Day shirts and whatnot and they are nothing like that at all. And I feel like because so many people with that xenophobic mindset often have those same like bogan-ish traits that a lot of other people I know get this really bad rep. While most bogans that I've met are friendly, nice, sweet, curious, outgoing people, the ones that I have met who are just die hard, love Australia, and do not question anything about Australia, whack jobs, almost seem dangerous. And that is one of the things that I don't like. I see that a lot in the States as well. So yeah, while most bogans are friendly, nice, outgoing people, I do hate the bogans that have that xenophobic, don't question anything about Australia mindset. Now this one, hear me out, because obviously as an immigrant, I am biased with this one. And unless you've gone through the immigration process in the last five years, it has changed drastically. But one of the things that I hate about Australia is how slow and expensive the immigration process has become. Hear me out, don't click out of the video just yet. You might actually learn something that a lot of us are going through trying to get into the country right now. I came over on a partner visa, a prospective marriage visa. It's the subclass 300. And 
to my knowledge, from my research, looking into everything, it's actually Australia's most expensive visa. It cost me over $7,700 to apply back in 2020. And when I apply for the next stage of the visa, which is a requirement, it's going to cost me another $1,310. That's more than the multi-millionaire business investor visas. And while some people say, oh, well, it's because it's so easy to fake something like that, you can just be in a pretend relationship, it is so difficult to go through the immigration process. They go over your applications with a fine-tooth comb. They look at your social media accounts. They look at all the evidence you've provided. You need pictures together. You need proof that you've met your partner before. That whole mail order bride concept is kind of a joke over here. Because the immigration process is so strict. And not only is it so strict and so expensive, but it takes so long. Even before COVID delays, there are couples who are waiting between two to three years in order for their visa to be approved. And that's without any issues coming up. That's without there being any like delays. It is just one of the things I hate about Australia is how slow and long the immigration process is. It took me almost a year exactly for my visa to be approved. And pre-pandemic times, that was actually a little bit slow for somebody coming from the States. Immigration process is long, it's expensive, it's pretty invasive. The visa that I'm coming over on doesn't have Medicare or any Centerlink benefits or anything like that. I started paying taxes literally before I came over here if you want to think about me applying for the visa. Not to mention all the taxes that I've been paying since I got here, which makes sense because I live here. And just for comparison, the U.S. can only cost about two to three thousand U.S. dollars for the K-1 fiancé visa, and that gets approved between four to six months on average. There are visas here in Australia that are taking two to three years. It takes about 12 months for a fiancé visa in Canada to be approved. In the U.K., it only takes an average of 12 weeks. And none of these visas are costing even close to seven thousand dollars. Most of them are half of that or less. So unfortunately, the immigration process has basically become a cash grab for the Australian government, and it's really, really frustrating to be caught up in all of that red tape. Now, this one I know is such an American thing, and I can see everybody going ballistic over this one down in my comments below. But one thing that I hate about Australia is that everything closes early. The cafes close early, the shops close early, the banks close early. And by early, I mean between 4 and 5 o'clock on average. Sometimes 6. But if you figure the average person works a 9 to 5 job, they're not getting out of work till 5 o'clock. That doesn't give them the chance to go to the shops to pick up things they need, to go to the bank and get any of that taken care of. At best, you can go to a grocery store and get your grocery shopping done for the week. But anything else that you need to get done has to be done on a Saturday or a Sunday. And some places aren't even open on Sundays. Banks aren't open on Sundays. Not every shop is going to be open on a Sunday. So it feels like every Saturday there is this huge influx of shoppers at the shopping centers, at the local stores. And that means a lot more people on the road as well. So traffic on Saturdays can be absolutely ridiculous because everything closes early over here. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, the workers don't need to stay that long. The workers need to have a life too. I get that. Nobody's saying that somebody needs to be chained behind a register from 9 in the morning till 9 at night. But that's the reason that part-time workers exist. That's the reason that you can have school kids working after school jobs. It opens up more part-time employment opportunities for people. And yeah, I know a lot of people scream, well, part-time's terrible, or we still have to pay some type of super even for part-time workers. I know there is so much economic reasoning behind why some companies do it, some companies don't. But coming over here, having everything close early, and having to run around on a Saturday to try to take off everything on your chores list is exhausting. And honestly, one of the things I hate about living here. So this one, I know pretty much every Aussie hates right now, or at least the vast, vast majority, especially the people who don't own a home yet. And that is the housing market over here in Australia. I mentioned in one of my past videos, actually went on a bit of a tangent about it, that the average house in Sydney costs $1.6 million. 
but the average person in Australia makes less than $100,000 a year. So even if it's a couple who is working towards getting a house, who is saving, who is pinching pennies, the housing market has grown faster than people have been able to really save up for down payments on these houses. Little shacks that are falling apart and need basically a complete reboot and basically need to be demolished are going for seven hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars. Trying to buy property here is ridiculously expensive. It's so competitive and it's really exploitative. Exploitative. One of the things that ties into this and a reason I hate Australia is the auctions that take place here. It almost gamifies the house buying process. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars into millions of dollars. And people are in actual auction bidding wars in front of the property that they're trying to buy. So you can make an offer and somebody could come in and keep outbidding you, outbidding you if they're a huge investor. It's gamified the house buying process and so many people haven't been able to buy their first home because of this, along with so, so, so many other reasons. I know it's not just housing auctions that make it harder for people to buy homes, but it feels like Pandora's box has been opened on this one and I don't know if it will ever really be feasible in the next 30 to 40 years for young Aussies to buy their first home. If they don't inherit one from their parents, who knows how they're actually going to get their foot in the housing market. Because you can stop buying lattes and stop buying avocado toast and not go on vacations and all of these other things that people say you should be doing, and yet you should be doing some of them if you really want to save up for a house. But most people can't save up at the rate that the housing market is increasing right now. It's just not feasible. This is tying into the last thing that I hate about Australia on this list, something that pretty much every Aussie you talk to will agree with this, and even if they're not agreeing with this, they're pretty much just pulling your leg or trying to start an argument. I hate Australian politics. There are so many reasons why, and a lot of people might say, I've only been here for a while, you don't know much about the politics going on. So while I don't know a lot about the history of Australian politics, I have been following it fairly closely over the last few years, especially with an election year coming up this year. And while there are some things that politics get right as far as elections go, I think most people can agree that politicians here are basically useless. They are lining their pockets. So many of them own multi-million dollar homes, own multiple homes. I mean, the Prime Minister was on vacation in Hawaii when the bushfires were going on. How much of a joke is that? The politics here are nonsense, and honestly, a lot of people in 2021, when they saw what was going on here while people were waiting to get vaccinated, while they saw the state borders being shut, were kind of making fun of Australia and pointing out just how flawed a lot of the logic was behind a lot of the decisions that the Premier's and the government as a whole were making. Obviously, no government's perfect and no government is ever going to be perfect, but I'm also seeing this huge polarizing movement that is just liberal and labor and everybody else, the Greens, the One Nations Party, all these smaller parties are just being stomped on and practically ignored in favor of listening to labor or liberal. That polarizing dichotomy is something that has become so core in American identity that I don't want to see it over here. I don't want Australia to be a little American in the way that people get torn apart by politics. That you have to be on one side or the other. That people prejudge you by the party that you follow. So that's one of the trends that is going on in Australia that honestly I hate. So hopefully I didn't just completely ruin my channel by posting this. <laughs> that is it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sure there will be lots of controversy going on in the comments. And if I got anything wrong, feel free to correct me. But if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe down below to join our little Amer Australian family. I post on Mondays and normally Thursdays about the differences between American and Australian culture and the overall process of learning to live down under. My name's Caitlin, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.